Lori Sim, Marlene Morris, Papa Joe, here, and Nyet Hartson, Forrest Michaels, Sue Buckley, and Sherry Teal. Are there any other birthdays that I'm unaware of? Anna Rosa is having a birthday. Ah, Dave, Dave, and then is he? No. Oh, he's just being funny. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, 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 and since we have an official permanent home, our classes and workshops will always be here now, unless otherwise noted. Yay! And I do have few that I'm going to be speaking of. Um, there is a book by Edwin Gaines for Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. It is displayed out on the front table along with the sign-up sheet. There's going to be a four-part class slash workshop that Reverends Patrick and Reader are going to be doing. There's going to be two, they're on Thursdays, there's going to be two Thursdays in November, November 12th and November 19th, and then two dates in December, December 3rd and December 10th. And they are all two and a half hours long, they're from 6 to 8.30 in the evenings, and that will be here. And you do need to sign up and register, and you'll have the books available, and the books will be available as well. And then also here, we're going to be having the Radical Forgiveness Ceremony, which is based on another book called Radical Forgiveness by Colin Tipping. And we're actually going to have Sherry Claire come and facilitate this. And it is really a life-changing event. Also needed to be signed up for because we keep it to a certain amount of people due to the nature of the workshop where we will have some sharing and um, in order to have time for everybody to share, we do keep it to a limited amount of people. But it's a really great way, as we all know, forgiveness really is the key to a lot of healing and a lot of change and a lot of shifts in our life. So this is a way to facilitate that in a safe way, in an anonymous way. You don't need to share anything uh, super personal if you don't wish to, but it's just having the willingness and want to change and to have um, you know, a shift happen in your life. Then you never know what the ripple effects from that will be that will happen from that workshop. So that's going to be on November 23rd from 6 to 9, and again, that's going to be right here, and the sign-up sheet is also at the front table. Another exciting, well, there's lots of exciting things, but another exciting announcement that we have is that we're going to be having our first concert here, and it's going to be with Michael and Carrie. Michael's out back. He's also been, you know, been a part of the center for a while, and they're bringing a friend, Max Rubner, if you're not sure who he is, you can Google him. He's a phenomenal artist. 
who has been working with guests as Naco and the medicine people, if you're familiar with that. He's actually performing that weekend. There's an event happening here on island. So that's going to be a Friday night event. There's also going to be a cacao ceremony, sound healing, and um, meditation intention circles. So there's it, lots involved with it, along with the music, because as we know, music is super healing and it's super fabulous. And that is going to be on November 27th at 7. Now, we will have tickets available for you. You can go to the website, CSL's website. And um, we can sign up for that one yet, though, right? Okay, this is kind of just a teaser to get the word out and to save the date. Now, this Wednesday is the last Wednesday of the month. And every last Wednesday, Anna Myers puts on a Living Circles mm -hmm. gathering where they just gather together at her home in Princeville. And that's Wednesday at 3, and talk about one of the articles in the Science of Mind magazine. Now, if you are not familiar with the Science of Mind magazine, we do have some available for the November issue. They do it monthly, and each day actually has its own reading and its own meditation, but there are fabulous articles. So what that gathering does is get together and chat about the article and just have an informal gathering that's of a spiritual nature. And there's going to be so much more coming up. We have uh, Rob still doing live stream with the help of Marco over there, who puts it on TV, and so we'll say hi to everybody out on uh, you know on the internet. If you are off island, if you know people who may be interested in finding out what we do here, but maybe not quite sure they want to come yet, it's a great way for people to tune in live. But also everything is recorded and you can watch again on YouTube later on. So spread the word, continue to spread the word that we're in our new home and invite friends. And now that we've got this abundance of space, let's fill it up. How's that sound? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Alright, so first before we go into our meditation, we're going to send our children off. I think we do have some children today. And I'm putting some feedback. I don't know why. Do you hear it or is it just me? Am I standing in the wrong place? Let's stand here. There's something. Yeah. We're just looking at things out. And thank you for being patient about the air conditioning. It is coming. I love your hat. <laughs> Thank you. 
to say, no here or no there, but we hold the kingdom of God is what's in you.
I wanted to add something about divine timing and how life really unfolds. Last night we did a sound check here and, and we had our little list of everything we were going to do when we walked in and we had that. And there was this part of me that kept saying, I really wish Michael was going to be here. <laughs> you know, because I thought, oh, maybe what happens, you know, so I had that little thing going on. And so it was so wonderful, Michael, when you walked in because it was just like that divine timing that says, whatever you need, whatever you require, will show up for you. If you trust it, and you count on it, and you expect it. That's what I found this morning, and the simple thing is Michael walking through the door. Because this is one of those moments that we are trying things, and, and finding our way through, because we go through a plateau sometimes. And not to say us up why it was in a plateau, but it was at a place that that needed to go to its next expression. And how that happens is people giving you a 30-day notice, it happens in many, many ways. So when stuff happens, you go, oh my gosh, really? Really? This is divine planning? Yeah, actually it is. So, there you go. Oh, so right. they, they love that thing. You should open that door back there. That yeah. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so why don't you tell them where they are? Thank they you. Say, yeah, I can't, don't know where you are by now. <laughs> you are in a Center for Spiritual Living, part of a larger organization called Centers for Spiritual Living. That's actually their head office, in case you ever wanted to know, is located in Golden, Colorado. Anyway, but here we are on this little island in the middle of the South Pacific. And wow, and we practice the science of mind and spirit, which welcomes everyone of all. It's an interdenominational faith, really, because anybody can practice this and still practice their own faith at the same time. Because we just believe one thing, and that is that the divine expresses through everything, all of creation, and that we are so powerful if we express that divine in our lives, if we remember that about ourselves and bring it into our lives, because our thoughts are things. I know you've heard that before, right? Thoughts are things. They are. We impress this universal law with our thoughts. And as we think, so we are. So that's what we do. It's very, very, very simple. And so we come here every Sunday to remember that. We go to classes to keep practicing it until it becomes first nature to us. That's what we want. So that we think in that place all of the time. Now, who is here for the very first time? Anyone? Anyone here for the first time? No? Yes. Oh, there you are. Of course. Oh, there. <laughs> Our CSL gang. Welcome, welcome. Well, I didn't tell you this at the door when we met, but we know something about you that we want to share with everyone if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> We're very agreeable. Right. So what do we know about them? What do we know about No, I don't know. <laughs> what do we know? That you are magnificent. You remember. You <laughs> are. Um, and the reason we know that is because we know that about ourselves because we can't tell you anything we don't know for ourselves. So, shall we say it together? I am magnificent. Now look to your left, right, up, down, wherever, and tell somebody next to you that they're magnificent. They need I got you. Oh, you guys are magnificent. I can't spell magnificent. I can't spell magnificent. Okay. Uh, you are too. You are Okay. Are we ready for our opening song? Yes, yes we let's are. So let's stand because it's so cool in here. We want to move a little bit. <laughs> Let's 
dedication to yourself and your spiritual growth. That's number one. Because without that, nothing is going to transpire at all, no matter what you do for the center or not. Then there's part B, which is your commitment to the family. And that comes in a lot of different ways, a lot of different sizes and shapes. But what I do know is that being a member, and I, I, I kind of do a little lightly, but being a member of this family, for me, is an honor and a privilege because we come together with a common idea that says, wow, I am good. I am God. I am that I am. We come together to do that. So being a member is more than that. It's just, so I want you to really, if you, I know that the ones that are the members really know that we don't take it lightly, that we honor you. And we honor the God in you that honors the God in us. And we know that this this place is growing and glowing. And so I just wanted to add that. So today what we're going to do is um, honor our three new members. And that would be Analea Russell. Analea. spiritual and name, we like to sing when well, we welcome you number is the face of God. So we will start that and the journey and then we will fire. I hold you 
sometimes there's healthy fears, because I mean, I think there are healthy fears for me. Like, for instance, I am never going to be on a surfboard. surfboard. Oh, just me. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I just, that's like a fear to me that I have. Like, that a physical, I have more physical fears. It's interesting. I'm not going to jump, you know, um, I'm not going to parachute jump, probably not. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But there's some, and there's some healthy fears like, well, lion's chasing you. That's like a healthy fear. You get fear and you start running, right? So, and maybe being on a surfboard is not necessarily, maybe that's just my like, insecurities, and maybe I will get over it. But something like, there's healthy fears that's like instilled in us that, that we run when something is threatening us or something like that. But we've taken it to a different level here, and um, we're afraid of things we have no right to be afraid of. I mean, it's ridiculous, really, the things that we're afraid of. And what it, the story is, and I got to explain it to myself really well by studying the science of mind and spirit, that we're born into the race. And we're born into the race when I'm talking about the human consciousness of the ages, forever and ever. There's like, Ernest Holmes likens it to that on the walls of time, it's like a picture gallery, that everything is there. And it's in us, because we're in this one mind and we share it together. So we're born into every fear, everything, every good thing, and every fear thing that's ever been and ever will be. That's why we can tap in at any time. In fact, he uses the example of actors, which I think is very interesting. He says that's sometimes why they have a lot of problems is because they're so good at tapping into that place that sometimes they don't realize that it's not, it's not really real. So I'm not putting actors down. I'm one myself. And, um, but... Um, yeah, so it is. It's there within us. We're born with it in us. So that's why if you if you wonder sometimes, why do I think so negatively or why do I... It's there. We can't help it. It is there. But the good news is that we have volition and choice. And we have a power within us that's above and succumbs all of that which is the power and presence of spirit and God that lives within us. So I really believe in spiritual evolution, ascension, whatever you want to call it, that we're on a journey, and this earth plane is part of that journey, is, this, is the journey that we're making, and what a better place to learn how to overcome these things than here on this earth plane where it's all right up in our face, right? All the time, all these things are up in our face. We can't help it. Um, Ernest Holmes wrote, to overcome fear is the greatest adventure of the man, mind of man, or, you know, using it, human mind. The greatest adventure of the human mind is to overcome fear. Now, I love the word adventure because it, it connotes to me that, that I'm going to have fun. I'm going to have a fun adventure. I'm going to have an exciting adventure. I'm not going to think it's like something that I can't do. Like, if you think of the movies like Indiana Jones, you know, he went out, he went out after his thing, you know, Star Wars, they went out after their, their whatever their quest was, and, and they had an adventure, and they, and they stuck to their quest, they stuck to their, to, to their intention, to whatever it, was, whatever it was to get that thing, to overcome that, that demon, whatever it was, they did it, and they stuck to it. And that's what we have to do. We have to stick to whatever it is that our intention is, which for me, and I'm telling you, it's just me, I'm talking for myself. You gotta find this out for yourself. I could be telling you a bunch of hogwash. You gotta find out if it's true yourself for you. That for me, my one intention is that no matter what, I don't give up on the one spirit, the one power that dwells in my heart and that takes care of things. Like Patrick said, when I say, oh my God, what about the sound today? Instead of giving into that, I just know that something's going to show up, and there it comes, in the form of Michael Fox. They, God is not anywhere but within us and within each other, and it shows up. That's why when we can say that God is the source of my supply, that it can come from anywhere, that when we actually believe that and practice that, when we can look anywhere, and there it is. It doesn't have to come from one particular place. So, it's that idea of, you can't believe in one thing and another thing. There's only one thing. There's one power, 
and we all use that one power in whatever way we use it. However way we're using it, that's the way it's showing up in our life. There's not two powers. So some of these fears that we have, like make some fears for me. They're not necessarily yours, just in generalities. Okay? What money? Money's a big one, right? Money's like probably the top, I would say, on this planet Earth. Rejection. Rejection. Oh my God, that's a big fear. Okay. What else? Failure. War. Failure. Illness. Illness. All these things. So the opposite of these things is the thing that we have to stick to. The idea that we believe, but let's say in lack, and lack for money, because we believe that there's a power that's going to desert us, a power that's not going to supply for us. So instead we go back to the knowing that we are always supplied and we have to stick to it no matter what. Like I say every Sunday, no matter what, how it looks, because eventually it changes because the more we believe in it, that's what this power is. It, it, it works on our beliefs. So the more this power within us, the more we use it in the right way and believe that it is working. That's why Jesus could raise the dead and all those things because he didn't have any doubt in his mind. He didn't like Patrick Boy so he didn't cross his fingers and think it was, maybe it was going to happen. No. And it's just it's one step at a time. One little step at a time. That's all. You just start right where you are and you start believing in it no matter what shows up. You keep saying. And you even look at that as a sign. Maybe like the more you believe in light, the more darkness might show up just to show you how much light there is. And it, it just glares in your face, the darkness, because you're so filled with light now that you see the darkness. Maybe you didn't even see it. Some of us walk through through the world not even knowing. We're not even conscious. And we don't even know that that's darkness. We just walk through. But now the more you get filled with light, like people say that the more they start to get hooked up into this principle and this idea that God is all there is, that the power is good and all that, the more they do that, the more kind of yuck that shows up in their life. Well, that's just because... You know now, and so now you're seeing it. So now is where you have to, no matter what. I love that you're saying that song today, even though that song is a love song. It is a love song. No matter what, you're trusting that beloved, that one, that thing within you. No matter what showing up. So, for instance, I'm going to give you one other example. This idea, like Patrick and I had to get a new place to live, plus do the center at the same time. Now, it's interesting how it happened because we just said, okay, we have to have a place. It's got to show up. There's no way that it can't show up. And we went about our business. You know, we knew we were going to have to look eventually, probably, but we didn't have time. So we were going to our ordination and we were doing this and trying to get this going. And we we're just like, well, it's got to show up. We're surely not going to not have a place to live. That's just, our consciousness says that. We have to have a place to live. We believe that. So what ends up happening it just came to us. It was like, all of a sudden, oh, there's a house down the street where you live, because we wanted to live there. And in the meantime, we hadn't gotten this yet. So it ends up that the house down the street is four minutes from this, but we didn't have this yet. So now we're only four minutes from our center. It, like, it, it's like the universe put it all together without us even thinking it out. So sometimes you don't have to think it out. You just have to have an intention and just stick to your t intention no matter what with love, of course, and peace, not like <laughs> So, I mean, it works for me, and it takes practice. And so, this great adventure that Ernest Holmes is talking about, you've got to pack for it. Like, how are you going to pack for your adventure, this kind of adventure? You're going to pack yourself with spiritual practice, you're going to pack yourself with, with um, talking positively, they call us the positive, happy people. Well, we aren't positive, happy people. There's a reason for it. If we weren't positive and happy, what's the, I mean, what's, who wants to be the other way? I don't want to be the other way. And when I go down that road, it's horrible. I, I mean, when I go down that road, it's scary. And it's, 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 I can just feel myself going, mm, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I Maybe want I to that. be positive. And being positive has always rewarded me, no matter what. Even if I'm rejected. Some, and I've gotten a lot of rejected. Somebody once told me, you've got so, such resilience, Rita, you just keep going at it. And eventually, it comes through. It may not come through exactly as you think it's supposed to come through, but you end up with a house four minutes from your center, and you just go, wow, how did that happen? So it's just sticking to it. So in positive talks, hanging out with positive people. Why would you hang out with people that are going to tell you that your dreams are impossible? 
All right? Now, it doesn't mean we scorn people and we don't, like, you know, we're snobby and stuff like that, but, you know, if somebody's telling me my dreams are not possible and they're putting me down, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. So hang with people that support your dreams, support your, support you in that way. And then, faith, we got to have lots of faith, right? No matter what, that's, that's it. It's faith rather than fear. Faith rather than fear. So, I just love this adventure. And I think that it's glorious and it's not always easy. And sometimes it's, 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 there's things that come up that, but you gotta just stick to it no matter what. And I have an acronym for, is that an acronym? Yes. I don't use the right words. I don't look them up and I just think of them the top of my head. And this one I woke up with for boo. And it's believe only in the one. So every time something comes up, believe only in the one. All right? Yeah. Namaste. Yeah. 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 Woo! <laughs> So I found this great quote from Will Smith. And fear is not real. It is a product of thoughts you create. Do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real. But fear is a choice. Ooh, that just totally blows everything we've been thinking most of our lives. Fear, can you imagine if we really, really understood that fear is a choice? Faith is a choice. Someone said, I just wish I could have the faith that you have the, the ability to see the good in everything. And I said, well, you can. You just have to choose that. Somehow, somehow we got into this understanding about fear, that it is this force that is outside of ourselves. I know Star Wars does promote that there is a force out there. Perfect timing, as it's coming to theaters near you, or maybe a week or two, or not. Um, <clears throat> fear. So this is what Halloween, right? Halloween, I love Halloween. I loved it more as a kid, but I loved getting scared and then knowing it wasn't real. I didn't want to know that, that, that when I went into that haunted house that I was going to end up really, you know, I didn't want that. I just wanted to know that it was fake and I could enjoy the fear. Why would we enjoy the fear? I have no idea. But I do know that some of the fear, I was thinking of the boogeyman. and. This whole idea of light, and they, they, you remember the hand-me-down clothes, like, you know, you get it from your mother or your sister, or now they call it thrift shops. <coughs> Hand-me-downs. My fears are hand-me-downs. They're hand-me-downs. They didn't belong to me. And it's really, really hard to really breathe that in and be with that. That the fears I've had, the insecurities I've had, the not thinking I'm enough I've had are not mine. I don't own them unless I allow myself to own them. I think of that boogeyman. Here's another idea that was handed me down. This morning, just to make you feel a little guilty, I got up at 5 a.m to come down here so I could open up all the windows and start the fans. Oh, martyr me. And guess what happened? It was dark out. Did you know that at 5 o'clock in the morning it can be a little dark? So I'm driving down there, four minutes away, by the way. Four. Um, and if I take my time, five. Four minutes, I'm driving down here and it's like dark out. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go in the parking lot back there. 
what's somebody's bath there? Blah, 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 the little fear that came from childhood, right? Don't go into dark places. Don't go into alleys. Don't go into... And all of a sudden, it was just like surging through me. And I said, did you remember who you are? I am the light. But I was still a little scared, so I parked right out my mind. <laughs> now, I am not telling you that I have perfected the no fear zone completely. But I realized in that moment, but that fear wasn't mine. And it was such a revelation. Who in that me, hell has revelations at 5 a.m. at the side of a, of a building? I do. And I thought to myself, Self, what is going on here? I don't own that fear. Somebody told me that when it gets dark and you go where there's nobody around, somebody's going to hurt you. Somebody told me that if we take a chance in life, you may fail. Somebody told me that I was a C student when I was an A student. And guess who? We don't get to blame people anymore. At least I don't. Because the blame game really keeps us really in fear. The boogeyman. I love this question. Does the boogeyman have nightmares? <laughs> Does the boogeyman have nightmares? Yes, I found out the boogeyman has nightmares. Then I'm going to find the light switch. <laughs> I'm going to find the light switch and turn it on. And that little boogeyman is so afraid that I'm going to find out, that you're going to find out that it wasn't real. And that all this time that we've went through our lives, holding ourselves back at moments, not daring to be everything that we can be, that there was a little boogeyman in there saying, I'm scared. I'm scared too. Who knew that the boogeyman was scared too? Yeah. Fear is an illusion. It's an illusion and it goes beyond just a pretty a pretty phrase to say. Don't you get tired sometimes of just saying it? We were just talking about, we, we finish everything with, and so it is. And for a while we were saying, and so it is now. And so people thought that might be a little redundant, because you already said it, and so it is. But I want to really clear that up with the family, and the so it is thing going on here. It's because sometimes we say, and so it is, you know what? Anyway, who's singing that? And so it is means that's it. I've said it. I've claimed it. But now God created because people wanted a bigger poof. So one of our really good friends in Canada. <coughs> They were like, so like, I want this now. I manifest this now. So it is now. So I, then I thought to myself, well, why don't we just say, and so it is with that kind of intention behind it. So that's the new way now. And so it is. But say it with, with conviction. Fear is a choice. Scary. Fear is a choice. Being the light is a choice. And I know, I know when you're looking at those lovely conditions, that boy, they look real and they look spooky. They look spooky. I just love these fans. I love this. It does. It's very, I don't know, southern. You know, it's just, it, it, it just brings me there. So that is the, um, the my message today.
about the boogeyman, about fear, about... I was just having so much fun. Boo. It says, fear grows in darkness. If you think there's a boogeyman, then turn on the light. And I used to always, always say that. Are you ready? Yeah, I almost, I'm almost there. I'm all, I'm all, that's right. The, the journey, it's okay. This is what I always love about Kauai. I always have since day one. It's a participatory um, island. No, it is, and she's absolutely right. It is about what we're turning on inside of us. There's nothing outside of us to turn on. So what do we do with that? We accept it. We stop pretending that we're not who we are. We start claiming beyond any anything that I am, that you are, not only magnificent, but you are the light of the world. Did you know, and I will end with this, I thought of the fact that we came here under the false pretenses of these little babies that were dependent upon the conditions of the world that you had to take care of me. And there's truth in that. But behind all of that, you came here, I came here, fearless. Absolutely fearless. How could it not be? And this is what I think it is. I think it's just life force, God, call it whatever you want, Getting to know itself again. Every baby that's born is a new expression of, wow, I'm going to find my way home. I'm going to remember who I am. I'm going to find my way home. And I'm going to tell fear to go away because it doesn't belong. We are fearless. Say it with me. I am fearless. I am fearless. One more time. I am fearless. Glad to know you, fearless. <laughs> Namaste. And so it is. That was great. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. So this is our time of affirmative giving, which just means that we are supporting this center is supporting ourselves in this center, allowing this ministry to go forward. Our actual donation this month went to um, the Kamalani, Friends of Kamalani Praying Grasses. We are, if you don't know that already, a tithing center, you tie about 10% of what you give to us. And, um, yes, and I heard that the Porters, I don't know the name of it, but um, apparently Mr. Porter passed away and he has a, um, a foundation that he donates to that I think I don't remember what it was called, but, you know, that's it, that was it, yeah. So, okay, so let's put, um, open our programs though and do our prosperity affirmation in there, which says, Divine love consecrates my gift. It goes forth to heal, prosper, and bless. It is evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I thank you for today, knowing it returns to me abundantly. Thank you, Vance, and thank you, everyone, on the mainland and beyond in Canada who have just contributed so much to the center. Everyone, thank you. Wow. <laughs> um, whoa. Oh, that's it. Oh, wow. 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 Oh, wow.
today with such gratitude, such love, such abundance, such prosperity that they're screaming in the streets of heart. So knowing that, knowing that, I just say yes. I am so grateful. And we just let it be so. As together we say, and so it is. So we have a few thank yous. Well, we have a lot of yeah, and where are the children now first? Oh, yeah. Somebody needs to get them by. I saw them go out front. You got them? Okay, cool. I think they might have been so, so I will start with Jackie and Katie, who actually were at the door. Thank you for being today. And Roy, after you the flowers. And um, to well, I'm looking at Rob right Rob, now, who, oh who not only dressed up today, had that wonderful <laughs> mask on, but oh, also oh, this is the first oh, time we're seeing oh, the, the uh, oh. this is the first time we're seeing the camera here. Yeah. So um, that is new. There we go. And there's a boo. And we're shout out to Sherry and Tom who are watching us right yeah. now and here, and they said love from Auburn. Happy birthday, Sue, and she's a Halloween birthday. This she month, so October 31st, yes. Um, okay, and and um, <laughs> Jeremy and Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And and Michael, Rosanna. thank you. Michael, right there. Yes. Rosanne, uh, Rosanne okay. and Rob, you, you do so much for us. And Marco over there in the corner with a great shirt on as well. Yeah. So, in the meantime, we'll wait for the kids. If, if they don't, let's do a little happy birthday. You're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Okay, so let's sing happy birthday to those who have a birthday. Are you ready? We have treats on the service. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So we do have treats after service. Are they coming? I don't know. This is kind of like that scene in Sound of Music. All right, we're going to close out. And the Vaughn Traps. And the Vaughn Traps. All right. Okay, so there we go. Let's close out. We're ready to close out. So, yeah. So you know on the bridge that it's on, we get the end of the stuff. So we're just going to like to keep it simple, we're just going to like hold out that note, boom stack, instead of doing like on the, on the original before you can do this whole big thing, and it's like, you know, like 30 seconds. <laughs> so, that's the right answer. Does anybody want to stand up? Yeah. yeah.
looking at God, looking back at me, namaste. I know we have come together today on purpose. Purpose to be who and what we are and to live from that, that, that place that has no fear. It has no what? Fear. fear. We have turned on the light switch today and we have left it up. We are filled with light. We take that light out into the world and we share it with every, every fiber of our being. So knowing that, I just say mahalo to each and every one of you. I just say mahalo to this thing called life. Mahalo to our future, future life. Right here, right now. Oh, so satisfied. With such gratitude in our hearts, we release it, we let it go with power, the power from within, we say. And so it is. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Over the dark clouds and Children have made something for us. Let's see what they are. And oh, come up, everybody. Oh, They're peace potions. Oh, on sale at the bookstore. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Peace potions. I love them. Well, I want to add, so that means okay. So, what is that? You know yeah, put a buzz down. 